Some WPL fans out there have been waiting for over two years to get their hands on the E1. Was it really worth the wait? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new WPL E1. This thing is heavily based on the Soviet Gaz 71 amphibious vehicle. It looks really good, but is it going to perform? Now I'm a bit of a noob when it comes to RC tanks and tracked vehicles, so if I do miss any vital details, I will leave a link to Banggood where you can pick one of these up and you can check out the full spec. Now before we talk about some of the features that you get on the E1, let's take a quick look at what we get in the box. You get the WPL E1 itself, and as you can see here, you do need to fit on all of the external parts. This is your accessory bag, and it features all of the exterior parts to complete the vehicle. Uh, you've also got a USB charger, a screwdriver, some WPL stickers, a black and white basic manual, which also shows you where you need to fit all of the plastic components. This is the two battery version, so I've got two 500 milliamp hour 2S lithium iron packs. They're tiny, but they should still give us a decent amount of runtime. The transmitter that you get with this model feels nice in the hand and it does feature a rubberized texture for added grip. You get steering dual rate, steering trim and throttle dual rate. So that's all we get in the box, let's take a closer look at the E1 itself. Here it is then and there's absolutely no denying how good this thing looks. Really really nice scale features, very very nice WPL. Under this little hatch is where the battery is housed. You've got your on and off switch right there. All of the wheels on this thing have independent suspension. Now this rear section here, which I'm guessing in real life, is a storage compartment or it may even be for troop transport. This is actually removable. Let's try that now. Plenty of space in there. We've got working doors on both sides and a full interior. And you've probably noticed I have fitted all of the plastic components now. We've got some fans under there, under that grill. Uh, we've got your exhaust. Very, very nice attention to detail. Overall, it looks great. So let's talk about the electronics then. Now this thing is running two 130 sized brush motors. It's got a two in one ESC and receiver, and we've got some LEDs at the front there. And I did test those out in my garden last night. Uh, they have got like a yellow tint. They're not very bright, but they still add to the realism. Right, so let's have a quick look at the fully proportional steering. Now we can adjust our steering dual rate. If we click it in, a bit slower. We've got very nice slow speed control. And that is pretty much it. So I think there's only one thing left to do. Let's see how it performs. So let's start off nice and slow then. Now this isn't the most challenging terrain, but let's see how it gets on. Now I have to say, as good as this thing looks, I really don't think it's as capable as they make out. We handled that that tree route quite well actually. So if you're thinking of buying one of these because you want to do some crawling with it, I think you should probably look elsewhere. I've had to stop recording twice now because one of the tracks has fallen off or something gets jammed. It doesn't take a lot to make those tracks fall off. Now those LED lights do look really good. Now I believe they're even talking about bringing out a trailer for this, which I think is a good idea, especially for people who enjoy the scale stuff. But I can't help but think this would just look better on a shelf rather than in actual use. And again, we're not on the most challenging terrain but driving this thing around, it just feels unnecessarily challenging. Now I wanna try and show you how easy it is for those tracks to fall off. I'm not being harsh to WPL here. I wanna give this thing an honest review. And for anyone 
looking to get one of these, you know, to have some fun in a forest like I am here, I want to show you that even getting something very small jammed in one of the wheels or under the tracks is enough to make those tracks fall off. There we go, that's all it took. So there we go then guys, that was the WPL E1. It looks great, but it performs like shit. Now I've got absolutely nothing against WPL or their products. I absolutely loved the D12 and the D12 Mini, but I just think this thing is a little bit of a disaster. Now, yes, it isn't a full-blown tank, and it's also only 1 16th scale, so it's not going to be that capable out of the box. But even filming this video alone, those tracks were a little bit disappointing. Now, maybe with a metal upgrade, this thing may be completely different, but as it stands, I don't think I would buy one. That is, unless, of course, you are into scale vehicles and you are into tracked vehicles, then this thing is going to be for you. Just be careful where you use it, because those tracks do have a tendency to fall off. Now I'm really hoping WPL release some upgrades for this and hopefully it will make it 10 times better. WPL fanboys, go easy on me in the comments. I'll see you again soon on the next one. Take care. Yeah.